Hey guys, welcome back. Today's lesson is on killer stances. So I know there's many of you that want to really have strong stances as you execute all of your techniques. And you might find that the stance doesn't look exactly the way it's supposed to, or it doesn't feel entirely comfortable. So I have some different skills and some different drills that you guys can practice so that you can improve your stance work, okay? The, the number one thing that one can do is to get a lot of repetitions. And while I don't know the exact magic number of repetitions that's gonna help you get better, I do know that you're gonna be making progress when you can consistently get the outcome you're looking for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in to the different drills that I use to perfect my stances. Let's go with our very first stance, which is gonna be a horse stance. So we know that the horse stance is here. Yeah! And we can see that the toes are straight ahead and the knees are bent with the chest out, the chin up, and the back straight. 50% of our weight is on this side of our body and 50% of our weight is on this side of our body. So we have an even weight disparity over our stance, okay? And most of you guys know that, okay? Uh, you can go into this stance over and over from here and make sure that it looks right by using a mirror or having somebody watch you or videotape you and then you could analyze it. Uh, but one of the problems with that is when we do our katas, we're going into the stances from various transitions and we have to become comfortable going in to the stances with their appropriate transitional move. So let's take a look at what that means. We'll take a look from a side perspective. So horse stance. Yeah! So we can use a step up movement, which is gonna be here. Notice how I'm staying level as I step forward and as I step back. Now some of you are gonna feel more comfortable advancing, while some of you may not feel as comfortable moving backwards or retracing uh, the, gown, the ground that you had gained. So you wanna make sure that you're comfortable on both sides of your body, moving both forward and backward. This would be on my strong side as I'm right-handed. Now some of you guys uh, are obviously left-handed, so the left side is gonna be your strong side, but no matter what your strong side or weak side is, you wanna make sure that you're giving uh, equal attention to both sides of your body. So let's take a look from my weak side. So from here I go to my horse stance. I wanna make sure that I get into my proper horse stance and I go into the transitional movement. So I'm gonna practice going into my horse stance, going forward and backward. And you wanna be comfortable, not only just moving forward and backwards, but on the strong side and weak side. And there's different transitional movements, as you guys know, uh, that are required of you as you practice your katas. And the more advanced the katas are, the more advanced those transitional movements are going to be. So you wanna make sure that you really pay attention to feeling comfortable going into those transitional movements. So let's go ahead and take a look at a cross behind. We can go ahead and we can cross behind backwards, and we can go ahead and we can cross behind or cross front forward. So once again, you can cross forward and go back, or you can cross back and you can go forward. But you wanna make sure that you're able to do this on both sides of your body, and those are the different drills that you guys can do, okay? This is true even with some of the other stances. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at our forward stance. So from here, we're gonna go into forward stance, just like this. We wanna be comfortable stepping up. We wanna be comfortable stepping back. We also wanna be comfortable stepping through. And you wanna practice this on both sides of your body. You'll definitely know what's your strong side and what's your weak side when you start doing these transitional moves. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. So here on the strong side, I'm gonna step up. Ooh, that one feels pretty good, guys. But when I go to my weak side, I can definitely tell this is my weak side. Stepping up, ooh, that doesn't feel quite as comfortable. So I'll need to get more repetitions there. Stepping backwards might be a little tough too. So you wanna make sure that your stances look pretty equal on both sides of your body. Those are different drills that you can do, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our back stance. Back stance is going to be here. Get it! So we can be in a check or we can have the fists here. We wanna make sure that we're able to step forward and step backward. And we wanna do that on both sides of our body. 
So from here we can step up and we can step back. Just like this. We want to make sure that we're keeping a 70-30 weight disparity on our stance. So what does that mean? Well, we're simply putting 70% of our weight in the back and 30% in the front. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. You want to make sure that you're doing it on not only the strong side, but also the weak side. As you keep your heels lined up, they should be exactly perpendicular, okay? Let's take a look at the, the final stance we're going to be exploring today, which is going to be the cat stance. Cat stance is a little bit more challenging because it requires to be really heavyweight on the backside of the stance. So it's going to require that you have 80 to 85% of your weight on your rear leg, just like this. All right. So that's going to be a little bit challenging, especially on the weak side. So it should look like this. Okay. Now the transitional moves you can work on are similar to the horse stance, which we did step up and we did step through. Okay. And we can do that here. All right. What the hands are doing isn't necessarily important, at least for right now in today's drill. So you can keep the hands here if you like. And what you're going to do is you can step through and you can keep your body level just like this is you don't want to have that uh, up and down motion. You want to be highly controlled. And backward. Just like this. Okay, so that's the key. You want to be able to win in the transitional movements and go stance to stance. Now I gave you some pretty basic ones, but here's some challenge ones for you if you like. You can go here and you can go to the back side. Just like this, okay? And you can do that with each of the stances. So the more comfortable and the more repetitions you get, the better you're going to be, the more comfortable you're going to be. And that's really the key. Get comfortable in your stances. When you start practicing your katas and you start executing the strikes, you get stance to stance with the transitional movements. So the complexity lies in layering. You have to be able to do the individual technique on a high level, but you also have to be able to do your stance at a high level. And what a lot of people forget is to do the transitional movement at a high level. And when you're able to do each one of those fundamental elements on their own really well, then you can begin to layer them and do them in sequence. And that's how you'll be able to put together nice, strong combinations and have an exceptional kata. Okay. I hope these drills helped you and I'll see you next time, guys.